All right. So we're going to get started on our Alaska cruise. And well, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just, I'm excited. I'm jumping the bit, gun here a little bit. <laughs> I know, I'm excited too. Now, I've never been to Alaska, and you and I were talking briefly a few minutes ago um about going on Alaska cruise and that's definitely on my bucket list and I know some of our audience members it's on their bucket list as well and so um what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through from the start to finish on what it looks like to be on Alaska cruise so come aboard with us and we're going to find out all that Holland has to offer and again you guys get to help us decide where we're going to go and what we're going to do so with that Let's get started. I am crazy excited, as I said. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I am ready to get out of this house and go on a vacation. And um, I have been here too long. I'm starting to miss vacations I've never even wanted to take before. So <laughs> I see things, I see people talking about trips or I've been watching um, Amazing Race and I'm like, I've never wanted to go to those places, but suddenly I wanna go everywhere. Yeah. Um, but one area I'm really looking forward to getting back to is definitely Alaska because it is such an awesome destination. And so wherever you happen to be tonight, I'm in Orlando. I know Anna's in Southern California. Um, wherever the rest of you guys happen to be, I hope you have uh, a beverage and you're ready to go on a trip because we're going to uh, take off. We have to get there. Um, so all of the Alaska experiences obviously are gonna start from the Pacific Northwest area. So you have a couple of ways to get there, but we have to pack first. Um, and I think Anna, you have some, some packing tips you're gonna share with everybody later, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I forgot to mention this, for everybody that's attending today, you're gonna get a free downloadable PDF packing guide. Uh, to Alaska because there's some special things that you need to know about when you're heading to Alaska. So we're going to give that to you free at the end of our presentation today. And then like I mentioned earlier, we are we do have some special offers and we're, we're going to mention those at the end as well before we pick our winner winner chicken dinner. So let's get on board. Well, we're definitely ready because we have our flannels on. Um, <laughs> Alaska, a question I get a lot is what do you pack? It's depends really on what time of the season you go. The Alaska season is from May to September. And so it can be cold. It could be in the seventies. You never know with Alaska. So layers are always a good idea. Waterproof shoes are very important because you're going to be doing some really cool outdoor activities. Um, and I always suggest, you know, some jackets, maybe a light jacket. If you're somebody who's cold, bring something a little bit heavier. Um, you definitely want a raincoat as well, because again, Alaska weather, you never know what you're gonna get. So being prepared for everything is, is a good idea. But my bag is ready to go. So we've got to get there. You can fly. Um, most of our cruises are gonna leave from Seattle or Vancouver. So you could hop aboard commercial, or if you wanna do a private jet like this, you're more than welcome to do that. Ooh, are we? We have been in the house a long time. So maybe you wanna get away, really away, and you wanna drive. So that's totally cool too. You could pack up a car, head up to Seattle or Vancouver, but we're taking a virtual vacation. So why should we limit ourselves? I think we could teleport there. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah, we'll I'm with you on that. Let's go. Snap our fingers and we'll be there. No matter how you choose to get to the port, we're all gonna meet and we're gonna embark on a really cool vacation. So we are going to step on board our Holland America line ship we're gonna be sailing um, from Seattle or Vancouver. And I'll show you a couple of different options that you can take um, with our Alaska experiences as we go through our vacation. Um, but we are gonna be setting sail. I'm so excited. I really cannot wait to um, get out there. So I have a question. How does everybody want to get to Vancouver? Cause that's where we're gonna set sail from. What seems to be the consensus? Is it flight? packing the car up or teleporting <laughs> so guys how do you want to go let's give it a couple minutes because there's the delay mm -hmm. i mean honestly if you're in imagination land virtual vacation teleporting does sound like the easiest way to go i couldn't agree more yeah we'll apparate like harry potter <laughs> whatever you want to do <laughs> yes exactly well i think we're gonna fly all right, flying, flying is a good option. 
I know there are some people out there that like to drive, but flying is, is very have, safe and reliable. We do have Lisa Davis that wants to transport. <laughs> yes. You'll join us on the transporting shuttle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Well, now that we're all in Vancouver, let's get on board. Let's go on vacation. We're going to have an awesome, awesome time. So we're going to board our ship. We're going to be sailing around one of the coolest destinations. As Anna said, so many people, and obviously all of you guys are interested in going to Alaska because it has so much to offer. It really is a destination that has something for everyone, whether you like being outdoors, if you like animals or wildlife, if you like uh, glaciers, if you wanna see snow, if you want to do some adventure activities, there is literally something for everyone in Alaska. And it is such a great place to um, experience everything that you love. As I mentioned, there are a couple of different ways you can do Alaska, and Anna was talking about this as well. Um, so you have seven day cruises, which are going to go round trip from Vancouver, Seattle, and these are some of our ships that um, will take you there. And with these itineraries, you're gonna sail up the inside passage. You're gonna be going into some really cool cities, which we're gonna talk about later. Um, and you have a couple of different options when it comes to the seven day itineraries. We also have itineraries in the business we call this open jaw. And that just means it starts in one city and it ends in another city. And we're actually gonna be doing one of these sailings. We're gonna be sailing on the new Amsterdam tonight because we are not just doing a cruise. If we're going on virtual vacation, we're gonna do this up and we are doing a land and sea journey tonight. Yes. Yes. Go so all out. All out. It's going to be awesome because if you're going all the way to Alaska, you might as well do it all. Um, so we're going to be setting sail from Vancouver, as I mentioned, and we're going to be hitting some really great places. Our cruise is going to be ending in Whittier. And then from there, we're going to hop on a train and we're going to head up to Denali National Park. So we're going to have the best time. Um, but if you can't do the land and sea journey with us when we're actually able to travel again, you can see that there's a couple of different options that are out there that work for how much time that you have available to explore Alaska. So now so, on our journey, we're going for seven days, but there are a longer cruises to Alaska. Is that right? There are. So with our land and sea journey, um, it could be anywhere from eight nights um, or eight days to 14 or 15 days, depending on how we want to break up the cruise versus the land. If we want to do more land, less cruise, we can do that. So there's kind of an infinite number of options. And then there are 14 day cruise options as well. Wonderful. And if I can ask one more question. Mm -hmm. So when is the best time to go to Alaska? I know the season from my understanding is from May until September. Mm -hmm. So when would you say is the best time to go? And when should people be planning their Alaska cruise? Well, definitely now is the time to plan. Um, the thing with Alaska is that it is such a hot destination for so many people. It's kind of a bucket list trip for some. Um, oh, yeah. For others, it's just full of adventure and they want to go and so the demand is always high for Alaska. Um, so if you're looking to travel in the 2021 season, um, it's going to be really busy and you want to book as early as possible so you make sure you get all the best staterooms, all the best options uh, planned ahead of time. As to when the best time of year to go, it really depends on what works for you. May tends to be rainier. So May is not always my recommendation. If you have to go in May, you're going to have a great experience. Um, but they're just coming out of their winter. You know, the snows are thawing. It's very wet. There tends to be more mosquitoes in May than there are later in the season. Um, so the peak months are really June and July. Um, but I've been in September and I thought it was absolutely fabulous. So you're starting to get a little bit cooler into the fall. So there really isn't a bad time for Alaska, but um, the busiest months are going to be June and July. Gotcha. Thanks for sharing that. Yes, of course. So I think we should hop on board. We should grab a drink and we should start talking about our vacation, right? Yes. What do you guys think? Should we, is it time to, for us to get a drink? I think so. Uh, what is everybody drinking tonight? <laughs> or on board? Yeah. <laughs> is anybody drinking right now? What are you drinking? I I have water just like you, but that's that's not fun. On a cruise, we need to drink something else. So I'm pretending it's choices? like a yeah, I'm pretending it's like a white Russian or something fun, <laughs> a martini, a beautiful glass of red wine. <laughs> 
I would like to know from our audience, what is your Stellaway drink when you're cruising? What is your drink of choice? For me, I like a tequila. <laughs> Gets the party started. So what, what about you guys? Let's hear from you. And, and don't forget, you can always just keep it fun with hot chocolate. Nobody's judging here. Whatever <laughs> is your cup of tea, if you will. <laughs> That's true. Tea's a good choice. I do like tea. Okay, I have Laura said she likes the salty dog. <laughs> oh, good choice. <laughs> I haven't had that one. Uh, sparkling water right now. Lisa, I'm with you. Lisa Taylor. <laughs> Someone says, uh, Julia said yes, tequila. <laughs> Lisa's pretending she's drinking an apple martini. So everyone is getting in the mood. Fancy. I'm having an and apple Helen martini Hung with on you, board Lisa. with tequila as well. Wow, we got some tequila drinkers. I love it. Sounds like we're all getting shots later. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Nicole says orange juice, LOL. Bethany says margarita. All right. And, uh, Lisa wants to know, is there a drink package? There is a drink package, and actually, I'm going to tell you about how you can get the drinks included even better, right? Got it. I'll remind you when we get to that point. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So now that we all have our drink, I think it is time to welcome and toast ourselves to a fun vacation. Um, Thank you, everybody, for being here on our venture. Yes. One of the things that I'm really looking forward to on this virtual vacation is the ability to relax and to just chill out, to have everything taken care of for me. And that is what you really get when you're on board with Holland America Line. Our crew is amazing at anticipating your needs and being there ready to answer anything that you need or have anything you need ready for you, but without being invasive. So they're there when you want them, um, but they're not going to be pushy or in the way. It's really gonna give you the opportunity to just relax. So knowing that I love hot chocolate and having that ready for me when I get back to the ship after exploring is one of my favorite things about being on board. Um, so I just absolutely love the crew. now. Nice. When I get on board, I really like to go to my stateroom and kind of drop all the stuff that I've brought with me um, as I've traveled. And because we're doing a virtual vacation, we're not skimping on this trip. I've booked yeah, us no, all in cabins for us, right? Neptune Suites, baby. We're going all the way to the top. So <laughs> we are all in Neptune Suites tonight um, or this week, I guess. And, um, you know, this is such a beautiful space to be able to come and relax and enjoy. The Neptune Suites feature some great amenities like your own coffee station, a Bose sound system, uh, binoculars, which are fantastic for Alaska. So I'm really looking forward to being able to relax here after some really cool days of exploring. And check out this bathroom. It's wow. bigger than my first apartment, I think. It's pretty fantastic, right? <laughs> yes. I'm looking at that tub and want to go for a soak. Yeah, it's it's awesome. And imagine being in cooler weather, being outdoors. It would be really nice to have a soak right after a, a nice hike or something. So yeah. our Neptune suites are waiting for us. We're going to have the best time this week. Um, and whether you choose to go in a suite or not, you're going to have a great vacation. But one recommendation I have is to at least consider doing a veranda cabin. Um, part of the beauty of Alaska is the scenery you're going to see and being able to enjoy that from your own private balcony, whether you're having champagne or a hot chocolate or you're just reading as you cruise the inside passage. It's a really nice retreat to be able to see the mountains and the water. Um, a lot of the marine life you're going to see throughout the cruising portion of your trip. And so just being able to look out and see otters or sea lions and whales off of the bow of the ship is, is a pretty cool experience. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I really like a veranda is because of the expanded views. A balcony is mm -hmm. great, but the veranda, you have that extra opportunity to take in the views and Alaska is the place to do that. And that Neptune suite is amazing. I would love to stay there. <laughs> Well, I'll settle for a balcony. <laughs> there are a lot of perks with the Neptune suite too. You get your own private lounge, you get some private dining, you get to make reservations ahead of time. So it's a nice way to pamper yourself after we've had to deny ourselves vacations this year. <laughs> Absolutely. Nicole said it's bigger than my tiny house. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> So I'm ready to set sail. I hope you guys are. There's a couple places we can go. One of my favorite places to go as we sail away is actually the Sea View Pool. 
Um, it's right up on the top. And at the very back of the ship, we have basically a double expen uh, extended um, balcony area um, or patio area. And it's just a great place to grab a drink and kind of watch as we sail away from Vancouver, which is awesome. Um, we've traveled a long way though. So if you need to have a minute to just kind of relax and, and unwind a bit before we start exploring the ship and, and more having, wine, um, no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, more wine, more champagne, a little toast, um, you know, being on our balconies is going to be a great place to do that. So, um, you could always take that time, but I'm really starting to get hungry, Anna. I don't Me know about too. you. Me too. Me yeah, too. It's about dinner time. The reason I chose this particular trip for us to take is because I love traveling for experiences. I love to be immersed in the destination. I love to learn as I travel. Um, anything that gives me the opportunity to uh, maybe learn part of a language or learn about culture to experience something new. I love food and I love wine and I love music. You're speaking and my the, language, Ashley. You're speaking my language. There are I think all that's things one of the sorry to interrupt i think that's one of the the things i love about cruising is the cuisine is always a plus um and you're making me hungry right now because i haven't had dinner <laughs> so where should we go what should we eat for dinner well we got a lot of options so um we might we might need some help figuring out where we're going to go um but the reason, as I said, that I picked our Holland America cruise, not just because I work for Holland America Line, is because the food is honestly the best I've had at sea. It's fantastic. And we have a lot of different dining options that are available for us. So um, as foodies, I think we should start talking about where we're going to go. And there's a couple things that we could do. We could go to the dining room, which is absolutely beautiful. It's our flagship dining area. Um, we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. The menu is always awesome. Um, we have just so many options, including the dining room. It's very sophisticated, as you can see. Beautiful. Um, but I think we'll pass on this tonight because as I said, we can eat breakfast and lunch here later during the week. So maybe we should check out um, somewhere that had a great burrata salad I saw on the menu. Looks Ooh, delicious, yum. doesn't it? <laughs> That does look de delicious, absolutely. I think they have that at the Pinnacle Grill. So this is actually our steakhouse at sea and it is the ultimate steakhouse. The perfect cuts of meat, impeccable steak and seafood. Um, it, it is really one of the finest meals that you'll ever have, uh, including that delicious burrata salad. But we've traveled a long way, even though I teleported. You know, traveling can be exhausting. Maybe a steak on the first night is is not going to uh, be the best option. Um, although the side dishes look awesome, don't they? Yes, oh, asparagus. definitely. Who doesn't love asparagus? <laughs> I guess some yummy. people don't. <laughs> yeah, some people don't, but I like it. It's, it looks yummy. <laughs> So we could check out Tamarind. Um, this is one of the coolest venues, I think, on board the ship. It's actually uh, been praised by Condé Nast Traveler as um, you know, a restaurant that really rivals a, an Asian restaurant on land, which is pretty cool. Um, it is a mix of Pan-Asian dishes. So you'll find some um, Asian dishes from all cultures. So Chinese dishes, Japanese dishes, Thai, um, Vietnamese, and it's got kind of a Pan-Asian twist on it. So sounds pretty good too, right? That's a good choice. That is definitely a good choice. Yeah, and, then, and it's do really- Do we have one more choice? We do. So we also have um, Canaletto, which is our Italian option. Yum. And I'm leaning towards Canaletto because I actually saw that they have a killer lamb chop on the menu. Doesn't that look fantastic? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So and then a I nice mean, little dessert too. <laughs> we we could share the tiramisu, maybe, if I don't eat it all. But I think right. Canaletto is where we room should go after tonight. those lovely lamb chops. Yeah, yeah. So I think we should go here, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you think where, Canaletto where do you guys Italian? Want to go eat? Pinnacle Grill Steakhouse, Tamarind Pan Asian, or the beautiful dining room where we can and get a mixture of dishes. And while we're, we're um, waiting for input from our audience, are these three restaurants that you just spoke of, are they included or is it part of a dining package? 
So they are actually part of a dining package option. It's what we call our signature dining. Um, they do have a cover charge for them, uh, but we also, I will tell you later how you can get the dining included in your cruise. <laughs> oh, nice. I like it. We're going to get the beverages included and the dining included. Okay. So, so far we have Julia says steakhouse. Bethany says steakhouse. Uh, Julia's like, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Me too, I'm with you. Nicole says tamarind is my go-to. Uh, Dawn says steakhouse. Helen is leaning towards those lamb chops. And Lisa Taylor says steakhouse. So I think we're having steak. Steakhouse, it sounds like. I like it. I like it. <laughs> but you guys can't leave. I know you're hungry. Have somebody bring you a snack because you can't leave because we haven't really even gone anywhere yet. Have we're drink. just going to yeah exactly we're just going to dinner so far so right. i think we will be heading to the steakhouse for dinner but i also love wine i heard a couple of you talk about some delicious drinks um yes. and on board our pinnacle class ships we have this fantastic space that we will definitely have to check out at some point during the week and that is glen it is our wine um our wine blending area that is sponsored by chateau saint michel and so we could actually have a private little dining group here if we wanted to. We can um, make our own wines, which we could bottle and take home with us. Um, or we could just go here and have a drink, you know, after dinner. So yeah, <laughs> or two or more. We're on vacation. Who cares, yeah, right? right? <laughs> but you know what? Now that we've eaten, I think it's time to start talking about what we're going to do this week. So we're heading to Alaska, uh, but where are we going? What can we see and do? So I think we should head up to the Exploration Central Cafe. And this is an area um, at the top of the ship where we can meet with the Exploration Central team. And they're gonna give us the lowdown on all of the ports of call that we're visiting, all of the cool shore excursions that are available through the week. Um, they're also gonna talk to us about some of the um, Exploration Central talks that are scheduled throughout the week where they have um, special speakers that might be somebody from a native Gunga tribe um, from the areas that we're visiting. So they can kind of give us some of that cultural enrichment that we can also um, expect to enjoy this week. Yeah, so, and I like that because I would have no idea where to go. So having this resource, um, you know, available is pretty awesome. So if you didn't plan ahead and you want to know what to do when you're on board, this is a great place to go. Yeah, for sure. So some of the places that they'll tell us about um, are, this is a really cool town called Haines. It's actually a small town. Um, I think they have one stoplight and 1,300 people <laughs> live there. So wow. very tiny community, right? Um, and it's the, it's kind of the town that time forgot in a way, if you want to go back in time and have that like old timey town feel, Haynes is perfect for that. Um, it is a place that not a lot of cruise ships visit, which is kind of cool. And one of the, you know, beautiful things about being on this cruise this week on Holland is that our ships are mid-sized. They're perfectly sized for getting us into really cool towns like Haynes. So Haynes should be definitely on our list of things to do. Okay, um, so you said mid-sized ship. So how many, what's the capacity on a mid-sized ship? The largest ship is gonna hold about 2,500 passengers. Okay. Yep, so very comfortable. Um, they're also going to tell us about the town of Homer. Homer is also a cool place. It is the town that's at the end of the road. So they actually sell certificates to people who make the drive out to the end of the Kenai Peninsula and they end up in Homer and you can get this certificate that you made it to the end of the road. Um, <laughs> we're not driving, but you can still take advantage of getting out to that end point because they have a 6.5 mile stretch of paved area that is um, open for bikers, walkers, um, if you want to skateboard or inline skate. So if you just want to get off the ship and stretch your legs and kind of take a really scenic walk, there's some great exercise in this area in Homer. Nice. Juneau is one of my favorite places. Um, and this is a really interesting town. So Juneau, as you know, is the capital of Alaska, but it's completely surrounded by water and mountains. So you can only get there by boat or by plane. Pretty interesting for a capital city, right? Yeah, that is. <laughs> and that view right there is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So Tell this is- Tell there now. <laughs> <laughs> Darn um, it. 
this is actually on top of Mount Roberts, which is in the area. Juno is a cool town because not only is it the capital, you can do city things as you know, city goes in Alaska. Um, so you can see some buildings, you can uh, be part of the everyday Alaska culture. You can hike up Mount Roberts, as you can see here, and be up in the oh, Alpine nice. Forest. And from Juneau, you can actually also get on to Mendenhall Glacier, which is really a highlight for a lot of people. So you get to go out, walk out onto the glacier, they'll like chip off a piece of it, make everybody a drink. It's a pretty cool experience, actually. Yeah, I've so, heard about that one. That That is definitely beautiful and an experience that I'm, I would be looking forward to, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot to do from Juneau, which is, which is a lot of fun. This beautiful town is Ketchikan, and Ketchikan is known as the salmon fishing capital of Alaska. So if you love to go salmon fishing or fishing in general, this is where you're gonna pick up those experiences. If you love to eat salmon, like I do, you can definitely get some good salmon here in Ketchikan. Um, there's also this really great heritage museum there that talks about the history of the totem poles from some of the First Nations. So if you're into the cultural side of Alaska, Ketchikan is going to be a really good place to pick up some of that information. Nice. And is it true that you can bring your salmon that you catch on board? Yes. And, and yes. have a chef cook it for you? Yeah, with Holland America Line, you can actually bring your salmon on board and have it prepared by our chefs. Or we'll even put it on ice and ship it home for you if you want wow. to wait and take it home. Yep. That's special. So that's the perfect souvenir, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd have to eat it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Seward is our next town and Seward is the gateway of the Klondike. And so everybody who left for the Klondike gold rush in the Yukon left from Seward. And um, this is obviously a very cool town, as you can see. It's also where the Iditarod goes from. So a lot of glacier, snowy activity kind of things going on from Seward. <laughs> so can you do the, what is it called with the dogs? Dog sledding? Uh, dog sledding, yes. Um, so we have some dog sledding, as, as I Tongue, get tongue That's okay. I couldn't think of the word either. <laughs> some dog sledding experiences that you could enjoy. Um, and I actually have some pictures of that in just a minute. Oh, fun. Yeah. So Seward is very cool. Another cool town that I absolutely love is Sitka. Um, Sitka is really exciting because it's got a Russian influence. So as you walk through town, you see these onion domes. Um, which is pretty interesting because, as you know, uh, Alaska was part of Russia at one point. And so uh, one of the most iconic buildings in Sitka is the um, church, St. Michael's uh, Church. It's got that beautiful Russian um, onion dome, which is really cool. It's just a cute little town, Sitka. Um, they have some of the stores that you would never think still exist. Like in the lower 48, they've closed down. But in Alaska, they're still there and they're still doing well, which is really interesting. Awesome. <laughs> And then, of course, we have uh, Skagway, which is a really cool town as well. Um, Skagway is also an area that you could jump off and get to the Yukon. And so it was big during the uh, Klondike Gold Rush. And Skagway is a great place if you want to do the White Pass Railroad, which goes into the Yukon. So it's this great train um, that was really the original train that took all of the people for the Gold Rush out to the Klondike. And you could still ride it. Um, there's a couple of different options. So we have some shore excursions where you could go into Canada and kind of spend the day and do some touring around. Um, if you just want to ride the train out there and then come right back, you don't even need a passport for that. So Skagway is really cool. If you want to just stay in town, you can hit up the Red Onion Saloon um, and we can all have a drink, another drink on this vacation. <laughs> yeah, in 2020, we need to have a drink. <laughs> Yes, we need lots of drinks. And it's a virtual vacation, so you can't get hungover. Exactly, so you're not driving anywhere. So question exactly. for you. So all these places that you mentioned, are they all places that on this seven-day cruise that we're on right now that we stop at? They are not going to all be on this one itinerary, but depending on which seven-day cruise you choose, it will be going to these places. So it might be gotcha. different combinations of locations. Yep. Gotcha. So maybe we can get some input from our audience. Uh, what is your favorite um, destination that we looked at right here that you'd be most excited to see. I'm kind of leaning towards Skagway or Seward. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite, Ashley? What, uh, which one did you like best? Sitka and Juneau are really my favorite towns. I loved Sitka. It was such a cool little 
small town. There was a little otter as we came into the port, which I thought was awesome. Um, and then Juno, so beautiful. Yeah. And Juno so beautiful. I love hiking. And so the hikes from Juno were really cool too. Awesome. Okay. So what, are, what is the consensus? Do we have some feedback from people as to where they want to go? Um, let's see. I have Haynes and Homer. Um, Julia said she would be excited for. Helen says all of them are her favorite. So she's going to go on you know, the longest <laughs> cruise so she can stop at all of them. Yes. Lisa Taylor said Sitka sounds very cool. Yeah, all of them. Um, and I know that glaciers are a big thing that people want to see when they come to Alaska. So, yeah. um, what, and you said, um, I believe you said Ketchikan has the glaciers or was that Juneau? Juneau. From Juneau, you can do Mendenhall Glacier, but really the creme de la creme of glacier experiences is Glacier Bay National Park. Got Hands it. Down. That's the one that I was thinking the of then. Now, is that the one yeah. that you can take a helicopter? Bill Tarazi said he wants to go to Maui. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that trip too. <laughs> <laughs> now, I understand there is, and I believe it might be Glacier Bay, where you can actually take a helicopter and it lands on the glacier. Is that this, is this? It's actually Mendenhall. There's a couple of glaciers, but usually Mendenhall is the one that you would take the um, helicopter out to, to experience. So with Glacier Bay, you're, you're going into the national park. They only have a few passes each day. Holland America Line gets about 91 of the, I think, 98 passes that they have available. And so we go in um, and you kind of cruise up towards the glacier. And then you basically just spend time doing really slow circles um, so that everybody has different views. And what is amazing about glaciers is they look cool, they sound awesome. It's just an amazing experience. So, you know, sitting on your balconies or if you want to go up to that sea view pool area, we have commentators that are coming on board from the National Park Service that will talk to you a little bit about the glaciers as we're kind of cruising around in Glacier Bay. Um, the other cool thing is that Glacier Bay is included on nearly every single itinerary that we offer at Holland, and we have multiple glacier viewing options. So not only will we be going to Glacier Bay, um, we'll be going into Hubbard Glacier, we'll be going into Twin Glacier. So there's a couple of different opportunities for you to experience glacier because that is definitely tops on most people's list. And I don't think we mentioned this, but Holland, if I'm not mistaken, is the first cruise line that ha ever went to Alaska. So you guys, is it 50 years? No, it's actually longer than Alaska has been a state. So 72 years, I think now we've been going to Alaska. Wow. And you yeah. guys, I believe are the number one, um, you guys get number one position um, which means you have the opportunity to get into more ports than some of the other cruise lines. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we have a really tight relationship with the communities that we're visiting and that we're taking you to. And we have, again, these preferred relationships because we have been there so long. So we're getting you closer. We're giving you longer in these areas. We're giving you more opportunity to explore Alaska. Um, so, you know, we really are, when we say we are Alaska, we really are Alaska. <laughs> well, thank you for that. And then Nicole wanted to ask, do all ports offer any type of helicopter rides to the mountain and the glaciers? Not all of the ports, but some do. And actually I have a couple of shore excursions we can we can talk about too, um, since you brought that up. Um, oh, Victoria, I can't forget Victoria because we do go into some Canadian ports. So we're leaving out of Vancouver, which is a really cool metropolitan city. Uh, but Victoria feels like you're going to Great Britain, even though you're in Canada. If you haven't been here before, it's a beautiful town. Um, they have wonderful botanical gardens, just it's really kind of old world feel. So this is a great place um, on our cruise as well. But talking about the shore excursions, we talked a little bit about salmon fishing already, right? So if you love to fish, there are several opportunities to do salmon fishing. Um, and you can have that brought back on board and eat it on the cruise, or you can ship it home if you want to. I personally don't like smelling like fish. I like eating fish. So I like the salmon bake, which is an all-you-can-eat salmon bake um, experience um, that we have available as a shore excursion. So 
this trip we actually do in partnership with Food and Wine Magazine. Um, so delicious experience to enjoy the flavors of Alaska. Yes. But, and then I talked a little bit about some of the activities, uh, the active adventure. You can actually do sea kayaking, which I think is pretty fun. I love being out on the water and love doing boating activities, things like that. So, um, so don't kayaking. fall in. <laughs> don't fall in. Yeah. You can see you're kind of nestled in there and covered yeah. up. So they're, they're helping you uh, prevent getting wet, which is nice. And then again, the hot, the hot thing I think for a lot of people is dog sledding and the helicopters. So we actually have helicopter flights seen from several ports of call. Um, some, as we talked about, Amanda Hall Glacier will actually take you out to the glacier and you can get off. This is actually our uh, dog sledding and glacier helicopter flight seeing experience. So you can combine them together. So you can go out to the dog camps and kind of learn a little bit more about dog sledding and, and kind of pet the puppies and play with the dogs and get all of your Iditarod uh, excitement out. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds amazing. I'm not, I think I'd be a little chicken. I'd have to have a couple of drinks before I got on that helicopter, but I think I might do it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very cool experience if, if you're ready for it. I'd love to know what, what are some of the things that um, our virtual compadres here are most interested to do in Alaska? What are you so, most interested to do, Anna? So for me, I, I, I did a rod, I'm into that. Um, the salmon bake sounds a lot of fun. And I, if I dare the helicopter ride, um, because I do hear that it's life changing that you, you know, you land on the glacier. I have, um, Nicole says dog sledding. Lisa Taylor says, um, my husband would love this. Bethany says, um, she wants that. Who? <laughs> <laughs> right on Bethany. So, um, yeah, I think that we have a, a, a varied group of people that would like to do a bunch of different things. So I'm glad that you shared a lot of the activities. Um, because you know what you mentioned in the beginning, one of the reasons you go to Alaska is for the views, um, but it's for the experience. That's why you go on vacation, right? To create memories mm -hmm. and for the experiences. And so sharing some of these experiences um, just really makes you want to teleport there right now. Um, mm -hmm. I have Don who says salmon bake for sure and dog sledding. I'm with you, Don, on that one. So yeah, a lot of uh, Different opinions here. Uh, Julia says dog sledding, salmon bake, glaciers, lots of drinks before the helicopter ride. So Julia, you and I are gonna have some drinks <laughs> before we go on the ride because <laughs> to me, it's a ride. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely need a couple of drinks. My husband would be all for that. He'd be the first one in line and I'd be with Julia having a couple of drinks first, but uh, I think it would be an amazing experience and I wouldn't want to miss out, so. Awesome. So, so awesome. far we're having a pretty good time on our vacation. Are you guys having fun so far? on our Alaska cruise? We're not nearly done. So don't I, don't feel like this is over. We still have some vacation to go, which is, is yes. a lot of fun. So I mentioned a couple of highlights for you all. We have a lot of great ships that are doing Alaska. Um, our new Konings Dam was supposed to have her inaugural season this year. So she's actually gonna have her inaugural season next year and she'll be sailing through Alaska and she's one of our beautiful Pinnacle class ships. We talked about the access to Glacier Bay, which is important and being able to see lots of glaciers, very, very important. So here are a couple um, that we visit on our different itineraries. A really cool thing that I wanted to point out too is that we've been going to Alaska so long, we actually own a lot of our infrastructure there. So we have our own hotels, um, we have our own rail cars, we have our own motor coaches. So when you're going on a Holland America Line experience to Alaska, the entire trip is really uh, contained, if you will. We know exactly who our partners are, um, who our guides are, who is going to be interacting with you as you're in the destinations on different shore excursions. So it's a really um, secure way to travel through the destination and we're really ensuring your safety in every aspect, both on shore and on board. So I think that's really important too. And with our land and sea journey, we can do up to three nights in Denali National Park. So that's gonna be really cool and we will get there soon. Um, but yes. we're also the only cruise line that goes to the Yukon. So getting out into the heart of the Klondike Gold Rush and seeing some of the really beautiful scenery of the Klondike area, unforgettable. So if you have the time to do all three, the cruise, Denali, and the Yukon, um, you will seriously love that experience. It's one of our highest rated experiences um, amongst all the places that we visit. 
and it's just such a unique area. So it's a great kind of once in a lifetime trip and then you can do the other parts um, shorter at other times if you wanted to. Yeah, so you get the full experience in Alaska. Yeah, exactly. And to give you an idea of how it looks, because you know, I'm a visual person. So you can set sail from Vancouver and here are some of the different ports of call that we have. Um, and as I mentioned in Whittier is where you're gonna actually uh, uh, board the train to get up into Denali. And you can kind of see how it takes you up into Denali National Park. And then if you're leaving from Fairbanks, it's further north. Um, you can also leave out of Anchorage as well. And then the Yukon, um, how close that is, that is a flight over into the Yukon. So just to give you some um, okay. perspective. Do you hear that, Anna? I hear some music. Is that in my head or? <laughs> I don't know. It, it could be. And that's okay. Maybe we're all listening to different things. But you know, we've had an awesome dinner. That steak was delicious. I think we can all agree. We've yeah. had some great drinks. We've learned a lot about the places that we're going to be going and some of the cool things that we're going to get to do this week. So I think it's time for us to really party and have a great time and get some uh, cool entertainment in. And so we actually have a lot of different places on the ship where we can do that. Um, so I'm going to look to you guys to let me know where we're going to end up tonight. Um, hanging out. So we could start at BB Kings, which is the Blues Club. And uh, this is a really cool place to hang out because all of the musicians are from Memphis. They are from BB Kings in Memphis. Um, and they are playing some awesome blues music through the night. So this is a pretty, pretty fun place to be. Sounds fun. We also have, if we want to chill a little bit, maybe first night, hang out, just kind of relax, we can hit up the Lincoln Center stage um, where some of the Lincoln Center performers from New York City have uh, come on board and they're playing some classical music. So if we want a relaxing night, we can go this route. Or maybe we should check out the BBC experience because this is really cool. We get to see um, pictures and some video footage of all of the cool things we're gonna be seeing uh, set to music with an orchestra. So that's pretty amazing. Gives you goosebumps seeing all the places we're gonna go. Yes. I feel like this is a party group though. I see the Lisa's. <laughs> I think we're going to end up maybe at the Rolling Stone Rock Room where we're going to be able to uh, dance the night away to some great rock and roll hits. Mm -hmm. um, so this this could be an area we go to, but I know that this is also popular, the Billboard Onboard, where we can uh, go and check out the dueling pianos, make some requests. There's often some in uh, involuntary karaoke going on here. I think you know what I mean. Everybody so I think you, you've partaked in that along. before, haven't you? I cannot admit or deny anything. <laughs> but I know, this, this is, is a pretty being fun recorded, place. right? So you don't want to be on record. <laughs> this this is a pretty fun place. I have had an experience where somebody was wearing Elvis glasses with the the lamb chops and singing on a table in this in this venue. So it gets a little wild and crazy. I don't know if everybody can handle it, but I'd love to hear where everybody wants to hang out for the rest of the night. Yes, what do you guys want to do? So I'm seeing right now, Mark says BB Kings is great. Uh, Nicole's like, um, I'd get a hot guy to dance with me, then BB Kings, <laughs> then Rolling Stone Rock. She's all over the place. Um, she's a good time, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole, for that. And then Julia said um, <laughs> she would like to partake in the karaoke. All right. So, yeah. So this, See, looks, this looks like a lot of fun. So this is going on every night of the cruise. So every you night. And pick something different every night. You can. And Nicole actually has the right idea of it. Doing it as a music walk is exactly how we've set it up. So you can actually walk from venue to venue. They're right in a line um, going down the, de uh, the ship. Um, on some ships, some of our other ships, they might be in other locations. But we've set it up so that you can bounce from place to place and hear different kinds of music. So Awesome. Nicole is right on the money. Right on, right on. But you know what? Hanging out on board has been fun on the cruise, but our trip is not over. We've got to get to Denali. And so we're all going to hop aboard the McKinley Explorer. This is our private domed rail car. It's going to take us into our uh, resort up at Denali National Park. This is a really cool experience because um, during this train ride, everybody is going to see different things. If you're in the front of the car, in the back of the car, there's going to be animals. There's going to be all kinds of stuff going on outside of the rail car. And so you're going to get to see so much cool stuff before you even get to Denali. 
And then we're going to arrive and we're going to be staying at the McKinley Chalet Resort, which is our private resort right at the entrance of Denali National Park. So Sweet. the three things that people love to see in Alaska are glaciers, wildlife, and Denali, Mount Denali. And so with the land and sea journey, you're going to get the other two. The wildlife and Mount Denali are definitely going to be checks off of your bucket list. And we had a lot of fun with the music walk, I think, all of those different uh, venues. And the fun doesn't stop when you get on land. We created this really cool place called Denali Square. And you can see it's just a great place for us all to come together. So after we've gone to the park or done different excursions, um, maybe you just hung out at Denali Square and Mount uh, McKinley Chalet Resort all day, we can gather around the cool fire pit. We can have a craft brew. Um, we can make s'mores over the fire pit and we can all share what we did during the day. So it's a really cool place to kind of come together and just share experiences and uh, talk about our day, which I think yeah, is a Yeah, that chalet fun looks, looks absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah. Lisa says, wow, train ride. Nicole said, Denali looks great. Mark said, uh, except that you usually can't see Denali, but on this, you can see Denali. You can, because with our, um, our land and sea journey that we're taking on this trip is going to be two nights in Denali National Park. And so with any of our Denali experiences that are two nights or longer, we include the Tundra Wilderness Tour, which is actually going to take us as close to Mount Denali as you can get without hiking it. So we're going to get um, pretty close to the base of the mountain, and it does give you really good viewing opportunities. Thank you for sharing that. Awesome. Yes. So this gives you a little idea. The uh, chalet resort is right here. Um, Mount Denali is here um, and so you're getting pretty close like I said this is kind of the as close as you can get without you know hiking on in back uh, back country hiking um, so it's a really cool experience for sure the Tundra Wilderness Store the other great thing is that this is included if you do the two nights or longer so you don't have to pay extra for this um, where you would have to maybe with some other cruise line nice and Mark said seeing the wildlife in the park is a great experience it so. is. Can Mark name this one? <laughs> Sounds like he's done it before. I'm putting him on the spot. Let's see. <laughs> we do have a delay, so let's wait a second here. <laughs> yeah. Mark, we're going to test animal. Mark's knowledge. It's like a game show. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, speaking of game shows, I saw that um, You're the Weakest Link, that talk show's back on air. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm like, okay. Um, it's not coming up on my screen. Oh, he said it is a bighorn. It is. Uh, yes, it's a bighorn. wild dog bighorn sheep. So great job. Great job. So this we is one it. of the big five that you can see in Denali. Of course, there's moose. If you're lucky to see some moose while you're there. I think the creme de la creme are the bears. If you can see those from a distance, that's definitely better, right? <laughs> yes, them this is safe. <laughs> yes, but Denali National Park is really where you're gonna have your opportunity to enjoy the wildlife um, and, and really get up close and hopefully not too personal with them, uh, but close enough to be able to experience that. Awesome. Yes. So I know, Anna, you were asking me earlier about what is the onboard experience looking like for 2021, right? Yes, absolutely. Let's look ahead. 2021 is what we're booking right now, what people are looking towards. And now not only we're promoting dreaming of going on a vacation, but now it's time to start planning that vacation so that you can have the date and the location of the you know, cabin that you want, the actual, the tour that you're looking for. So I'm excited to see... Um, Let's check out the onboard experience for 2021. Yeah, so all of those great um, onboard experiences we talked about with the dining, with the music walk, all of those venues are still going to be on board and accessible to people um, in the 2021 season. We're still waiting on some final confirmations as to what the onboard protocols are going to look like, um, but hollandamerica.com is a great resource right at the top of the page. It's got um, our updates related to COVID and how we're addressing that for the onboard experience. And know that your safety and security is always first and foremost in our mind, the most important thing, um, followed by making sure that you have a great vacation experience. So we don't ever wanna do anything that's gonna sacrifice that overall vacation experience and 
a lot of the same things that Holland America line has always done will continue to be done. So plenty of areas for hand washing, um, hand sanitizers throughout the ship. Our um, lunch and breakfast buffets may change slightly, but we've always served you instead of you having to serve yourself. Um, so there's little touches that we've always included as part of our premium experience that will stay. And then there may be some things that change, but again, we wanna make sure that you're first and foremost safe and secure, and then that you're having a great time while you're on your Holland America line experience. So some things may be different, um, we're not exactly sure what that looks like today, but hopefully in the next coming weeks and months, we'll have a clearer picture of what that onboard experience looks like. But to your point, um, Anna, there is a huge interest in Alaska and a lot of the sailings are filling up quickly. Unfortunately, a lot of those Neptune suites are already sold out for 2021. Darn. <laughs> I know. So if you want those specialty accommodations or some of our limited suites, if you need connecting rooms, things like that, um, planning now is really the best time to plan to ensure that you're able to lock in all of those great things that you want to take advantage of. Absolutely. And I know that that um, Holland does take their guests and their staff safety, you know, to heart. Um, so I know that you put all these protocols in place, but is there a reduced capacity? Is that one of the protocols? And is there anything that um, in regards to excursion that's going to be modified? Or is that just a moving target right now, since everything's so fluid? Yeah, right now we don't have anything really concrete on what the capacities are going to look like. Um, we're imagining they will be reduced. We don't know what that looks like for each ship. Um, our smaller ships are about 1,700 guests. And as I said, our largest ships are about 2,500 guests. So it looks different for each vessel and where it's going. Um, but we do expect to have some reduced capacities, especially early on in the season. Um, as far as, um, you know, other uh, accommodations that we're making in regards to shore excursions. As I mentioned, a lot of the experiences we own and operate in Alaska. Um, so we actually have an entire land-based staff there that's part of the Holland America Line um, family. And a lot of that is going through some very stringent um, reviews right now to ensure that it will be aligned with whatever we need to do to be um, compliant with any kind of protocols um, that we're mirroring from onboard the ships to onshore experiences. Awesome, yeah, I appreciate that. And yeah. um, I just wanna mention for everybody on the call today that we do have a special promotion. If you stay to the end, we're, we're getting there and we have a, a little bit more to go, um, but I will just touch on that. There is a special promotion and everybody that's attending is gonna get a free downloadable PDF packing guide of what to pack when you go to Alaska. And then at the very end, Ashley is gonna to get to pick our winner of our grand prize. So thank you so much for joining us so far and hanging in there with us as we're getting close to the end of our vacation. You know, speaking of promotions, Anna, I think I mentioned something about dining and beverages included, right? Yes, yes. Talk about that, cause that's the good stuff, right? Yeah, we so, wanna talk good stuff for sure. Not only is Alaska popular and you want to book early to get your best accommodations, but you want to take advantage of this because this is honestly, hands down, I've seen the promotions that are coming out later. This is the best offer that we will have for Alaska 2021 ever. So not only do you have exclusive deals uh, for joining us tonight and working with Anna, our save now and cruise later and have it all sale truly has it all. So you're going to get free signature beverage package. So all those great drinks that we're having all week on this cruise are included. You're going to get free prepaid gratuities, which is awesome. You'll also get free signature dining package, which is going to allow you to uh, enjoy that steakhouse for free if you like. And if you book a Neptune suite or any of our other suite accommodations, you'll also receive free Wi-Fi um, with this offer. In addition to the reduced deposit that Anna mentioned, um, as some exclusive benefits. So it does say October 31st, but I have uh, heard from little birdies that that is going to be available for a little bit longer. So um, you can take advantage of this because like I said, I've seen some of the promotions that are coming up later. Nothing is as good and includes as much as this does. Awesome. So yeah, this is yeah. right now going on and hopefully for, for at least another, little birdie told me seven days, so. Yes. 
Let's hope Maybe that's longer. the case. We'll see. <laughs> you know, you never know with 2020. <laughs> that's a pretty nice deal. That's that's a good deal. Yes, Definitely. yes. And I know we talked a lot about Alaska tonight. Um, it sounds like some of you have already been to Alaska, which is awesome. So maybe you love Holland America Line. You fell in love with the onboard experience and the ships and the crew and all of the great things that, that we bring you. So you don't have to just cruise to Alaska with us. We actually have other areas. Um, if you've done Alaska with us before and you wanna to look to somewhere else, we have over 470 ports all over the world. So we actually cruise to all seven continents. Um, and and you're, everything that you fell in love with on the Alaska experience or wherever you've sailed with Holland before, you can enjoy anywhere else in the world that you want to go. So all of this is available. Those great promotions are even available um, for these other areas. So don't feel like you have to go to Alaska. If you want to go to Maui, I heard of Hawaii. Who was that? Don wanted to go to Maui. Uh, Bill wanted to go to Maui. Bill. Yes, yeah, so you can you can hop on board your Holland America Line experience right from San Diego and head all to Hawaii and have a great vacation with all this cool stuff. They probably oh, nice. won't have salmon fishing there, but <laughs> <laughs> they'll have something different. <laughs> something exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I just want to thank you guys for coming on vacation with me because I've had a lot of fun getting out of my my house here and using my imagination. I hope you guys have too. Does yeah. anybody have any questions about yeah Alaska feel free to ask some questions while or... i um just announced the special promotion um what ashley had on the screen is definitely a special promotion going on right now but reduced deposit is available so if you're going on a cruise of up to seven days your deposit is reduced to only a hundred dollars per person and that is unseen and unheard of uh, if you're going on an eight to 14 day cruise it's two hundred dollars per person and 15 days or longer it's three hundred dollars per person so reduced deposit so you can secure that 2021 or 2022 vacation whether you're going to go to alaska or if you would like to go somewhere else with holland so that's our special promotion that we have going on um, and then Ashley, I would love for you to pick our winner today, but before we do that, I just want to thank our sponsor. So in our, our nice little bag that we have that we're giving away today, this bag was given to me us donated from Erica Ortiz from Macy's. She's a personal stylist at Macy's and Cerritos. And inside we have some goodies from Origins. We have a $25 gift card and we have some nice little goodies from Holland as well. And of course, this is a Kate Spade bag. So who wouldn't want that? So, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. So we would like to thank our sponsors. And of course, most importantly, we'd like to thank Ashley. And we'd like to thank all of you for coming and joining us today. And if you are interested in getting on board and if you would like me to help you, my email is ahoy at dream vacations, or you can send me an IM and I'm happy to get back to you and get you on board your Alaska cruise. So we have numbers one through 17 and you just get to pick the number and see who our winner is today. No I'm gonna pick, cheating. <laughs> no cheating. I'm, I'm just gonna kidding. pick you know. nine. Nine, okay. Nine is Bill Tarazi. Bill Tarazi, you are the winner. My Hawaii buddy. We're yes. going to Maui, man. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, Bill. You are the winner of the grand prize. I will get this over to you. And thank you everybody for watching. If anybody has any questions that you want to pop into the screen, we'll stay on for a few minutes and answer any questions that you have. Um, Julia liked the presentation. She said, phenomenal. Lisa um, said we did a fantastic job. Thank you, Lisa, Ta Lisa Taylor, and she had a great time. Nicole said, book with Anna today. Thank you, Nicole, I couldn't agree more. Julia was congratulating Bill. <laughs> Yay, Bill, congratulations. And again, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, I know we're not actually on the ship, but this is the next best thing to go on a virtual vacation. So we're glad you could come aboard with us and experience um, all that Holland has to offer. And I have not been on a Holland ship and this is making me really eager to get on board with all, all the amenities that you talked about. And that Neptune suite, if I can afford it, is calling my name. <laughs> So, so thank you for that. Helen said, congratulations, Bill. Um, Nicole said, the purse doesn't match your outfit, Bill. You can send it to me, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> 
Very <laughs> nice. Very nice. Well, thank you everybody for joining. Again, my email is ahoy at dream vacations or send me an IM. And I, as soon as we're done with our presentation, I will get you guys the downloadable PDF Alaska travel guide. And the special promotion is going on at least for the next seven days. We'll keep you posted if it goes on a little bit longer. And thank you, Ashley, for your wonderful presentation and sharing your knowledge and experience. And I know I can't wait to get on board. So thank, thank you, you so much, Ashley. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Have a good evening. Now that we're hungry and we need a drink, it's time to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of your night. And again, thank you for joining us.